So we're going to have a look at the pattern match with with formula editor or with molecular structure drawing question type for Moodle. And it's really useful if you do chemistry. So I'll just give you a quick demo. Um, here's one. Uh, draw 3-methylpentane. And we can just preview this question. So we have a quick look. And it's basically just that. Give the structure. And it's got a pretty standard uh, molecule editor. So we can draw out 3-methylpentane. And we can click Submit and Finish. And it will evaluate the answer and you can assign different marks for different possible answers. So it's not just right or wrong, but we'll get into that in a second. The way it works is that the structure itself is converted into a smiles notation. So if we scroll down, this is the response or that structure written in smiles notation. And it just does a quick match to see does this match what it's supposed to match. And then if it does, you get the marks. And if it matches something else, well, then you can get different marks or you can get no marks if it doesn't match. There's actually quite a bit of scope in terms of the kinds of questions you can ask. So here's an example, uh, a step from the Pickett-Spengler reaction. And I'll just demonstrate some of the possibilities. Um, so let's preview this question. And it asks, what's the next step in this reaction mechanism? So we can draw that out and we can see that it doesn't actually matter what the bond angles are. All that matters is that you have the right connections and also that you have the correct charges. So that should be the correct answer. We'll submit it and we'll see that we get one mark out of one. But we can also have partial marks, for example, if the student leaves out the charge, which is a very common mistake for students learning to draw mechanisms. Uh, so you'll see that I have this set up uh, and we'll come on again on, in terms of how I have done this. But um, yeah, I have it set up so that if the student leaves out the charge, then they'll get some of the marks, but not all the marks. So that's correct, apart from the fact that this is missing a positive charge. So we'll submit that and we'll see it's got one extra electron compared to what it should have. So partial marks. So how do these questions work? Well, create a new question and you're looking for pattern match with molecular editor. And we're going to add it in and we'll start off with a test and um, draw butane. So when you do this, you can draw out your question. You can copy and paste images of molecules in there if you want to give them a, or whatever you want into the question. But the answer is done by matching to a particular thing. So you have to basically put in what you want the molecule to be uh, and you have to put it in in smiles notation. So in this case, we're going to say match and then butane is easy. So match space open bracket and then your smile string and your smile string is just going to be one, two, three, four carbons in a row. And that's all there is to it. And then you have to give that 100%. So one of the answers has to have a grade of 100%. If they get an answer wrong or if there's another answer, then you can for any other answer, which is the last option down here, you can have many as many alternatives as you want. Or certainly I've never run out of alternatives. Uh, I'm sure there is a limit, but you can offer them some feedback, either uh, further instructions or send them back off to a video that'll tell them what they need to know, or just offer them, you know, you've put in the wrong number of atoms or whatever it happens to be. So if we save our changes here, we can continue editing. And now that we have the question saved, you'll see there's no errors. We can preview it. And we can see if we draw a butane, one, two, three, four, it will mark it as 100% complete. Smiles notation um, isn't the subject of this video, but you can read more about it if you want. But the thing about it is, is that it's quite hard, except for very simple molecules, to think about what the smiles notation is going to be. So the easiest way to do it is actually to open up the molecular editor when you preview a question, and then you can draw out your notation like this, uh, or sorry, you can draw out your molecule like this. And if you click on check, this is obviously wrong, but down below here, it'll tell you what the smiles for what you have drawn is. So if we wanted the student to draw a propylbenzene, then we would have our answer match this particular string here, and we can just select it and copy it and paste it and put it back in. Of course, you don't have to hit check every time. You can actually just click here and you can copy it as a smiles uh, notation straight uh, onto notepad, control and C. You can also copy it as a SVG, so an image file. So you can copy that and you can paste that into your 
question. So it's you know useful rather than open ChemDraw or whatever you have, or if you don't have access to ChemDraw, you can draw out your molecules this way and convert them straight into pictures either. So there are some slight added complications. Uh, if we take this molecule here, for example, and we check it, we'll see that the smiles notation, uh, if we scroll down, has a whole bunch of brackets and other bits and pieces in it. So if we think about taking that and putting it back into our question in the first place, if we wanted that to be our answer, we'd be putting that in and then we'd be finishing with a close bracket. But of course, as soon as Moodle sees an open bracket or a close bracket, it thinks that it's trying to uh, say that that's the beginning or the end of the smile string. So to get around that, you have to declare those special characters. And the way that you do that is you put in a backslash in front of every bracket in the molecule. So we put in a backslash in front of this, in front of this, and also the square brackets that are used to uh, denote charges. There's one other thing that you have to put a backslash in front of, which is here we can see that the backslash and the forward slash are being used to indicate the stereochemistry of this double bond. Well, if the backslash is indicating a special character, you have to put one in to indicate that the next backslash is actually a character that's meant to be there. So now if we put this in and we click save, we'll see that it happily stores that string and there are no issues. And that's gonna match back to the molecule that I just showed you. What happens if you don't put in those slashes? Well, if we just take out one by way of example and we click save and continue editing, we'll see that this returns and it says the first correct answer has to be a smile string with no wild cards or anything else in it. That's really not particularly helpful. And um, if you're having trouble doing that, first just check that all the black slashes you think are in there should be in there. But also then sometimes if you put in a simple correct answer into the first one, and then you start editing it in the second one, it will give you an indication of where the bracket is missing. So say we delete this out of there and we save this now. Obviously I corrected the first one, but the second one is the error and it tells you where the missing bracket is because it shows you that it was okay until you got to here and then you were missing, you know, the next bracket is missing its forward slash. So that's just a tip in terms of, it won't actually give you feedback on the first answer in terms of what's wrong with the smiles, but it will for the second one. Once you have that done, then you can draw any sort of complexity of question that you like, really. Okay, I hope that's useful. If you have any questions, post them below or get in touch and I'll try my best to answer them. That's all for now. Bye.